let's just review, because obviously not everyone was in on the same question. So we've got this pattern that is built up here. And we were talking about what was the core of the pattern, what stays the same, and how do I build the next term, the next term? What, what is the thing that gets added on every time? And in this case, we decided there's three hexagons get added on to the next value. What's the core of the pattern that's always there? Jackson? The single one, yeah? So instead of thinking it as a four, and then adding three onto the four, what we actually thought about it was, well, there's a one and a block of three, and that matches the fact that we're adding three on every time. Okay? And now that works because we then thought, ah, well, if it's always a one, and then it's for the first term, it's one lot of three. Is that what you're in it? Tenton, your eyes up here? Um, if it's a one and one lot of three for the first term, then one and two lots of three for the second term, and then one and three lots of three for the third term, it made sense that for the tenth term, it's going to be 10 lots of three and the one, which meant the term was 31. Okay. For the hundredth one in the pattern, the hundredth term, we know we're going to have 100 lots of three and the one. It's always the one, the pink one. Okay. So we then wrote that. Remember I said there was a difference between writing a term-to-term -term rule that adds three every time. That's how you get on. So if I do 10, 13, 16, that's very good if I want to know the sixth term, the seventh term, but I want to know the hundredth, it's too much. So what I did was then, I need to describe, but mathematically, using algebra, how we find a term, that I spe a specific one that I want. Like, I want to know the one hundredth term without having to find all the others. So we do that by saying, well, if you want the 100th term, you need 100 lots of three, and then add the one. But that's a long-winded English way of saying it, isn't it? That's not a nice, short, maths teachers don't like writing essays answer. So a nice way to write that is to write 3n plus one. So what does the 3n mean, Jackson? And what does it mean in this sense, the 3n? Yeah? Yeah, which one you want, yeah? Yeah, so if I want the 50th term, I'm saying that n is the 50, and I've got 50 lots of 3 plus the 1. Make sense? Why have I written 3n and not n3, do you think? Okay. Right? Right? But what I'm asking, maybe to make it a bit clearer, could it be n3 plus 1? Would that mean the same thing? What do you think? Um, no, it wouldn't be. It would be the order of operations. Okay. But if I, let's let's say, what's the 50th term? So we do 3 multiplied by 50 plus 1, or we do 50 lots of 3 plus, well, which one makes more sense? 3 lots of 3? 3 lots of 3? Well, I think 50 lots of 3 makes more sense, because that's what I was doing here. 1 lot of 3, 2 lots of 3, 3 lots of 3, 4 lots of 3, 10 lots of 3, then. I did it up there, right? So this is what I would actually probably think in my head, but that's the way I write it. Any ideas why? What do you think? Des? Yeah. 
exactly that. Yeah, well done. Right? It's called a convention, guys. Right? A convention is uh, something that we decide amongst ourselves that everyone is going to do. And what we do is we write any numbers before any unknown things. So if we're going to do a multiply, it just reads nicer to say three n's rather than n threes. So although technically that still means something multiplied by three, we just don't write it that way. Okay? Karen? N represents numbers. I think you've got your answer. Yeah. Why did I choose N? Well, I'll tell you why I chose N. Because quite often in patterns, okay, what we see is this. I can write an equals and write T N. Now, what that means is the T means term. So, for instance, this is quite high level communication for you guys now, but you asked the question, yeah? So if I said to you, what is T32? I'm asking you for the, Karen? Good. I, I want to know what the 32nd term is, and we work that out by doing 3 times 32 plus 1. So a bit of vocabulary there. Why N? Because N stands for, in this case, the number of the term. But we don't have to use N. It's just quite often when you see patterns in textbooks and in questions, they'll use an N in this sense. But you don't have to. Right? You could use P for position. You could use X would be 1, A, Q, we tend to not use certain letters. Which letters do we not tend to use? Yeah, letters are the letters. Exactly. Which? <coughs> Sorry? S? I. I or L, maybe, yeah? P, P potentially. We, uh, we see quite a lot of P. It's like nine. Wrong way around. Q, then, you're thinking. So I think the main ones are the, the oh, first yes. one is O, because that can look like a zero. Uh, we tend to use L is one of those, it might look like a one, but if we write it properly, it's fine. So we, that's not a problem. But um, if you just wrote I as like that, then that's an issue. So we have to write it as I or I, and that's fine. But there are definitely ones like S, because S really can look like a 5. Yeah. Uh, Q, but if you write Q clearly, Q is fine. Uh, we, so there's not many, but like O definitely. You do see it sometimes, but we try and avoid it. The way to do O is if I write 30 or 3 O, Oh, you make the O smaller. And there is another way people do it. They put um, a line through the O, so you know it's an O. Have you seen that? Yeah? Yeah? Well, sometimes, um, if we're doing applying our maths to something like in science or physics, oh yeah, so the O might stand for something in particular. You'll often see other letters which you should recognize now, like I could give you three. It's actually a lambda. Greek, do you remember we did that? Yeah. Anyway, right, so different letters. Now, what I want from you is an understanding of how we progress the pattern why this is 3n plus 1. So, can I just say, if you haven't got that, can you ask that? You, uh, uh, is that good? Georgia, are you okay with that? Right. Well, this is, uh, yeah, okay, if you want to write that down. 
If you've already written, what we're going to do is we're going to move on to practice five, which, which is on page 102 in your book. All right? And we're going to try and find some rules, not from a pattern, but from a, just a set of numbers that's following a pattern. Okay? So you've got a couple of minutes to write down what you need. If you've already written for those people that were here yesterday, um, turn to page practice five and have a look. We're going to look at question one. There's a lot of them there. You might need... You were here yesterday. You should already have it all written down. So all of that. That's it for today. That's all I did today. All of that. Page 102. I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, it might be worthwhile if you've not written that and you're happy to move on with it, if it understands. It's on a video. I posted it on YouTube. So you could leave a gap and write those notes at home in your own time. It might be better that way. What do you think? 102. Should we do that? Leave a gap for this, because actually I think it'd be quite good to keep you moving on with the, the understanding, rather than take a break to write notes. What do you think? Don't rush, don't rush. I'm still recording. All right, so. So we're on page 102, question one. Now what we're told, right? is input and output. Now, we've got to make a link between what we did yesterday now. Do you remember yesterday, I gave you that little task at the beginning, and it was, you had these boxes to fill, yeah? And, for instance, you had to put a number here and a number, you had an answer, let's say five, and you have to say, multiply by something, add something. Yeah, remember that? <laughs> All right, now these is where, if I put an input in, this would be the output. So that's what they're telling us. All right, now another way to, to, to look at that, let's say the input, we've got one, two, three, four, and 100 for the first one. And the output, is 4, 8, 12, 16, and 400. Okay. I think you just listen to me at the moment. Okay. Afterwards, it's difficult to work closely with people anyway, isn't it? All right. So, basically, can we see that it's following a pattern? Yeah. All right. So what we are trying to figure out, like with the other one, the rule was we had so many lots of three and then add one, yeah? Now I can rewrite this as a pattern of numbers, like this, all right? So it's up to you to do it. I'm gonna write it as four, eight, 12, 16, and then 400. And the one means the first term. The two means the second term, three for third, four for fourth, and 100 for the hundredth term. So we've made it now, it's exactly the same thing, but we've made it into a list like you're used to seeing. All right? Now what we have to try and do is figure out what the pattern is, and then figure out a rule that would help me find any term I like. Okay, what do you think? Yep, yeah, that's the simplest way, and I can see it. Multiply the term by four. But what I want to do is I want it's not always going to be that simple. So what I want to do is I want to show you a method that works all the time. So do you remember up here? We knew it was so many lots of three because it was adding three on every time, yeah? We could see it in the pattern, we could see it in the numbers. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at that bit first. And we're going to say, right, what does it go up by every time? 
plus 4, plus 4. Now, because it's always plus 4, but with the 1, 2, 3, 4, does that make it linear or not linear? Linear. Emma? Exactly. All right, so what we've got now, we have figured out what gets added on every time. So what we can do is we can write, well, we must have n lots of 4 every time, yeah? Does that make sense? Because it's adding 4. So this, is a, this always works. If it's linear, you can identify it's linear, right? And we know whatever it adds on every time, that is the bit that gets added. So we know it's 1 lot of 4, 2 lots of 4, 3 lots of 4. So on, yes. Does that make sense? So that's our first step. So n lots of four, I say it that way, even though I write four n. What's the next bit? Well, the next bit is to work out the core. What are we adding four onto? All right. So what we look at is say, right, here's the first term. The first term is four. So if I do four lots of one, what do I get? Four. I've already got what I want. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So what do I have to... Is there any extra bit that gets added on? No. no. So there's no add anything. So I can now write that Tn is 4n. And what I need to do is I should check, which is, is 4 multiplied by 2, 8? Is 4 multiplied by 3, 12? Is 4 multiplied by 4, 16? Yes. Is 100 multiplied by 4, 400? Yes. Okay, so I, I can now say, what is T, 200? Okay. Because I would do 4 multiplied by 200 and get 800. Okay. How do you feel about that? It's quite easy. Yes, please. Right, so let's just check the second one. So the second one we've got inputs are one, two, three, four, um, and a hundred. And we match with two, four, six. Okay? So if I write them out in the other way, now you don't have to do this. I'm just trying to make a link between what you saw before and what you're seeing now. So we've got one, two, three, four, and a hundred for those terms. And we've got two, four, six. Now, the sharp eyed amongst you will have noticed. Ah, if you take the number of the term and double it, you get the number. So we could write, in this case, that Tn is just equal to 2 lots of whatever the number is, 2n. Oh, yeah. And we can confirm that by, look, you notice that as you go up, it's adding two, and that confirms that this so many lots of two works. Yeah? Does that make sense? Let's do C as well. All right. Uh, let me just write it. So we've got one, two, three, four, and one hundred, and we've got six, seven. Eight. Now, again, let me rewrite them as one, two, three, four, one hundred. And we've got six, seven, eight. Um, lots of hands gone up. Kieran, what did you notice? Um, one plus five plus six gives you five. Yeah. So it looks like you take the number of the term, which is n. You don't multiply by 2 or multiply by 3 this time. You add 5. So this one isn't 
and add five. Now, this is an interesting one. So can I have everyone fully focused on me on this one? All right? Everyone fully focused because this is where my M5s will make mistakes. All right? Seems super simple, but they will. And the reason is, if it's N plus five, what's the pattern going up? What do you add on? Got ya. Got ya. What do I add on to go up the sequence? You're adding on one. one. But the turn. What I did that. That's what I did. You add one, but All it's right. one plus five. Right. So, do you remember what I said? Right? What you go up by is how many, you have n lots of that number, yeah? How many n's do I have? Here. Just n means how many n's, G? One. So I could write one n, but we don't write it, do we? Now that confirms that the plus one is how many n's you have. You have n lots of one, because it's add one, add one, add one. But what do we have to add one on to start? There must be five plus one to make the six. This one, seven, is five plus one. two lots of one. Yeah? Five plus three lots of one. The fourth term would be five plus four lots of one. And therefore the hundredth term is five plus a hundred lots of one, which is just 105. Okay? But do you notice how you all fell into that thing of saying, well, if it's n plus five, it must go up in fives. It's not, you didn't, you were like, you were wrong. Okay? So that's a, a very interesting one. Okay. All right. I would like us to have a look at G together. Have I got time? Yeah, I've got time. Any questions on that one, by the way? I'm not finished writing it. Do you want me to pause while you write? Yeah. One. Wow. Right, oh, no. now, okay. what you'll notice with this one is there are some gaps. Right? Now, you might notice already that to go straight from this number to this number, it's actually as easy as doing dn wow. equals two. Multiply it by 6, yeah? 6n. Now, that's fine, because there's no adding on. But what I want to show you is, let's say it's not as easy as just multiplying by 6, like the other one when we had to add 5. I want to show you what we do not do is go from 6 to 18 and think we add 12. Because that would make me think it should be 12n, right? We don't do that because... Yeah. There's a gap. You right? move 6 to 12 and then 18. Exactly. And when we've done this, we have to fill in the gaps. And also, you'll then notice what's different about, for instance, E and H on your book. Can you see E and H? Yeah. So E, you'll notice what about the input? It goes down. It goes down. And there are gaps, right? It's 50, 400, it's not one, two, three, four. So you've got to be super careful with that. And also in H, it also does not say one, two, three, four, that it has four, four then six. six. Ten, 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 so you have to be very careful that you don't always just go from one number to the next. You have to think, am I going from the first one in the pattern to the second one? To the or am I going from the four to the six? Right. So in this case, they've made it nice because they've actually left a gap for you to show you there's a gap. So it's not plus 12. It's actually plus 12, but we have to do it in two jumps. So it's plus six both the times, which agrees with this then, yeah? Okay, so that's good. So we know it's 6n, and then we check and do 12. Six lots of one would be six, and I've got what I need, so there's no reason to add it on. 
Now, what we haven't been doing with these questions, what I haven't done it with you, is to fill in the gaps of the tables, right? And you'll notice that I have not once used this one at the bottom, because I've been using the one, two, three, four, because they're all in order, they're in consecutive terms in the sequence. Right? Now what we could do is we could happily, once we've got the rule, go back and fill in. So this question here, I know I've got to do n plus 5, so we did it here. 4 plus 5 is 9, 100 plus 5 is 105, and so on. Okay. So there's a couple of things just to review. Whatever it goes up by, that's you have n lots of that number because that's how you build up the pattern. Make sense? And then you figure out what the four is. What, what do you add that to, right? The other thing we've been saying is make sure you have the numbers in order. You're not skipping things with gaps, right? Make sure you're going up as well, okay? Right, any questions on that? No?